going on, everybody? My name is Jonathan McNamee. You're watching That Guy Talks. And today's episode is about Taylor Swift. Now, on one of my older episodes, which is right here, I had a comment from Ivy saying, I would love to hear you talk more about Taylor's music, which got me thinking, hmm, hmm, hmm. What if I listen to all of Taylor Swift's albums, all the way from Taylor Swift all the way to Evermore, and I rank them? So what I had to do next was devise a plan. A plan to listen to 206 Taylor Swift tracks, which is nine albums, which is eight hours worth of music. And I did it just for you. So let's see if my album ranking lines up with your album ranking. And let's see if I turned into a Swifty. Now, before I dive into music, her albums aren't really a sit down and listen to from start to finish type of album like I'm used to. So it was very challenging for me. It was as if one song would end and the next one would begin and have no cohesive feel. Before I listened to all Taylor Swift songs, my favorite song was Thug Story, T-Pain featuring Taylor Swift. Now, some people might say that was your favorite song. Yes, this is a bop. But since I've listened to all of these albums, it has changed. So be sure to listen for my number one album. Another fun fact that I learned is that Taylor Swift's favorite word is rain. Every album and almost every track references rain in some sort of way. Now, I don't know what is her obsession with rain is, but hey, it must be working. My number nine and Taylor Swift's worst album, in my opinion, is Reputation 2017. Now I know a lot of people will disagree with me saying that this is her worst album, but I think this was a too try hard album. She was trying to be influenced with more of the hip hop culture and everything, and I understand that, but she had a following of pop and she was killing it with other albums. I feel like this was just a boring album compared to other albums. Songs that I really like, Look What You Made Me Do, Delicate, and of course, the song featuring Ed Sheeran, Endgame. My number eight is a more recent album. Now this album to me, in my opinion, was more of a bubblegum pop-ish sounding album. It was more mainstream than any other album that I listened to, and it was Lover, released in 2019. I felt like this was a very pop-ish and very flat-lined Taylor Swift album. I felt like a lot of other albums had more emotion and a more story-based, and I feel like this one fell flat. The songs that I really liked off this album were Lover, Me, featuring the lead singer from Panic! at the Disco, Brendan Urry, and The Man. Overall, really wasn't wowed about this album. Lucky number seven on my list is Taylor's debut album, Taylor Swift, which was released in 2006. This is my number seven because this is simply the weakest lyrical album she has ever written. She was young, it was 2006. She had songs like Tim McGraw and Teardrops on My Guitar, which were lyrically baselined for what our expectations were for songs to come. This was a great album for her career to start. Songs that I really enjoyed were our song, Teardrops on My Guitar, and I'm Only Me When I'm With You. Number six is an album, in my opinion, that was not hard to listen to, but hard to listen through. She was only 20 years old at the time of this release, back in 2010, when she released Speak Now, and I felt like this album was a heartbroken love letter, and I just wanted to give her a hug. But what I really liked about this album was the movie-like lyrics that she took me in my mind, taking me to these different places of these songs. I also thought that she was talking to me when she was singing the song, Dear John. I liked songs like Mine, which I think should have been the first song on the album, Dear John, which I referenced to before, Mean, and Last Kiss. I mean, overall, this album was very, very sad. Number five is polar opposite from our last one. Speak Now had emotional lyrics and thoughts, where this one is a mature way of thinking about hard times. My number five is 2020's Folklore. This is one of her most recent albums. It shows her maturity as an artist and a woman. Folklore dropped out of the sky, where everyone can agree that it was a weird time. People were blown away by the modest acoustic folk sound and the intrinsic woven lyrics throughout this album. Folklore was Tay Tay's most emotional album to date. Songs that stood out to me were Mirrorball, Cardigan, and of course, August. And this is where my list gets a little tricky. You see, I wanted to put another album here at number four, but this album just resonated with me a little too much. You see, I graduated high school in 2012, and she released this album, Red, 
the same year. So every dance and every party had a song played off this album. This album solidified her title as the pop princess. This album has hit after hit after hit after hit after hit after hit. It is jam packed with hits such as 22, Trouble, Never Getting Back Together, but the hidden gems on this album are Holy Ground, and of course, if you don't listen to the Taylor's version of Red, You're Dead to Me, the 10 minute all too well. All right, everybody, it's top three time. And this one was a very hard decision, but this one comes back like a 90s trend. 2020's Evermore, which is the sister album to Folklore. I didn't know albums could have parents, but I guess they're related. This album to me is what I think Taylor Swift is supposed to be as an artist. She entranced me with her lyrics and her musical progression. This was the most mellow of the albums, just had chill fall vibes. I really wish I was listening to it in the fall to kind of get that immerse feeling, but it still brought me to that feeling like I did in the other movie-like lyrics that she's had. Songs that stood out to me were Gold Rush, Champagne Problems, and of course, the album title track, Evermore, featuring Bon Iver. Now I know that Evermore is what Taylor Swift is going to be, but when you say Taylor Swift, I think these two albums. My number two on this list is Fearless because it's catchy fun, lovey-dovey, naive love story. Fearless was Taylor Swift's second album, and this really showed her talent on what she would accomplish in the later years to come. This album won Album of the Year at the 52nd Annual Grammy Awards, the 2009 American Music Awards, the Country Music Association Awards, and the Academy of Country Music Award. Fearless took over 2009, and songs are still catchy to this day. The songs that I really liked off this album were Love Story, You Belong With Me, but the true gems of this album were Forever and Always, White Horse, and 15. This was Taylor's lifetime album. This was the best album until she released my number one. My number one Taylor Swift album is probably her most perfectly written sounding and overall best album she's put out to date, and that is 1989. Now when this album was released, I didn't listen to it, and I totally regret that to this day. Because this album shows her potential of not just being a country music pop star, but also a lyricist and composer. Yes, this album does have hits that were overplayed on the radio, but for good reason. This album is a roller coaster of emotions and stories. There were songs like Wildest Dreams, This Love, and Clean, which made me floating and falling in love with her. And then there were songs like Bad Blood, Blank Space, and Shake It Off that made me want to fight and break up with her. This album was a perfect album for Taylor Swift, T-Swift, or t Swift. Did my ranking hold up to your ranking? Throw it down in the comments below. If you like this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thank you Ivy for this episode's suggestion, and I think that you would like this episode too, where I dive into Taylor Swift's album Red, Taylor's version, with an in-depth look at all of the songs, telling you the best ones to listen to. And from all of us here at That Guy Talks, let's cue that music!